If you're in England, you will be aware. Yet again, for the third time, junior doctors have gone on strike. 72 hours started this morning and things have not changed. Their demands are simple, crystal clear. <coughs> 35%. That is what they're asking. Let's have, shall we, a little listen. The value of their pay has gone down. We've got junior doctors now qualifying and being paid just £14 an hour, and yet they have up to £100,000 worth of, of debt. And we're asking the government to recognise that drop in value and therefore to restore the value of their pay. And it doesn't seem unreasonable at all to ask for £19 an hour instead of £14 an hour for the expertise that they bring. There you go. So that was one of the chiefs there of the BMA, the Doctors' Union. Um, so much, so much I can say. Um, I massively respect the work uh, NHS doctors do. I think that <coughs> is not up for debate. I think pretty much everyone would say uh, that they respect, that they value these people. But what is the value then that sh they should receive this 35%? It all basically goes down to the fact, as was alluding to there, it's all about restoration, bringing you up to a 2008, uh, you know, what you've lost by that date. I find uh, what he says a little bit disingenuous, I must confess. They go on about uh, the £14 uh, an hour. You'll remember that Pret uh, poster. It was in all the papers saying, why is a junior doctor earning about the same, or less, I think it was, uh, than someone, a barista, making coffee and all the rest of it. And it's not genuine. That it's, Well, you can if you strip it all back. But that £14 an hour, basically, it's stripped right back. It's the lowest entry-level point. It removes all of the kind of overtime, the nighttime allowances, the uh, any of these kind of fees that everyone would normally get. So I find that comparison a bit disingenuous, and I think you don't need to start from that point. Mm. You lose me when you mm. start from that point. What about you, 35%, yes or no? Well, quickly on the prep point. Yeah. I think you're right, and I don't think it's worthwhile... I've got the advert, by the way. I'll play it while I'm talking. I don't think it's worth pitching um, different professions against one another like that. I have to say also, prep cheese baguettes about £8, so I don't know where the money's going if it's not going to their workers. Um, on this point around NHS doctors, I see it as a technical issue. Now, I know that's quite difficult to do, but let's try and do it. What's a technical issue? So, right now, between three and four in ten junior doctors are looking to leave the country because they can get more money, which is just an objective fact. Are they? Or, or are they, how do you yeah. know that? Are they just sitting there going, if you don't pay me more, I'm going to leave? How do you know they're definitely... They are, no, they are going. I mean, we, for instance, we have, we're 46,000 nurses short in this country because they objectively earn more money in the United States, Australia and the UK. And whether or not you think they should be paid more, we have a health service in this country. We need doctors. We need nurses. We have massive shortages in staffing. To the extent that we are importing en masse healthcare workers from countries which the, the World Health Organization has said, please stop taking workers from places like Nigeria. So what, what's yeah, but the... Hang on, though, there's red lists. So, so if, some, if a country really is in dire straits, there are, like, red lists and you can't really start recruiting... Oh, but we do. But we do. And, and, but we do. And I think this is a really... Phone on silent, man. That's what we started, you... everybody. Can you so hear that? I, and I thought, it was the, I thought it was the youth of today that were, you know... I know. So, uh, so, uh, this is, who is so it? It's like, oh, is that you on telly, David? Pack it in. Go on. And um, so I, I view it as a technical issue, Michelle. And I think, fundamentally, this is going to cost a billion pounds. And if it means we stop hemorrhaging junior doctors elsewhere... I think that's valuable. And I'll finish with this. They will earn a lot more money as consultants as senior doctors. That's absolutely true. But when you're graduating with £100,000 and there is a two, three, four year window in your career, we need to remove that disincentive for them to stay or the incentive for them to leave. So, so but this cost, by the way, this billion pounds is what the BMA say. So mm. they, it's going to cost actually about two billion a year. What the BMA say, they put it as a, a billion because they're saying that's the net cost. Once you've stripped out, well, they'll be paying a bit more in national insurance back, they'll be pay, uh, paying a bit more in income tax back. So that's the one billion where it comes from. Well, that's annual. Can I just say, as well, it's also negotiation. So let's say they agree on 25%. Can I, we, I, can I we think... just, this is all getting very interesting and very technical, isn't it? But let's <laughs> actually start looking at the big question. What's gone wrong with the general management of manpower in the NHS? Because clearly some two things have gone staggeringly wrong. The first is there have been gross miscalculations. The, re what the fundamental reason for that, of course, dare one say it, it is the percentage of doctors who are being trained who are female and therefore taking the decision they will go part-time. What we've actually seen without... Again, it's, you know, it's a good thing, but it has consequences people have not fully reckoned with.
with. What we've effectively done, because again of the talent of young women, in, in, beating young men to medical college places, simple as that. Um, we have effectively doubled the cost of medical training without actually thinking about it. But what percentage it. of these doctors that are leaving or whatever <coughs> is junior doctors are female? No, 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 no. no. Listen, but the reason that, that overall, what well, this is a subset of the overall shortage of medical staff. And then there are two reasons for this. One is the leaching out to come particularly to Australia um, and to a much lesser extent to America. The other is the leaching out because of doctors at very early career stages in their 40s going part time. And th there are these two sets of problems, which we haven't really begun to think about. The second thing is, of course, that we train doctors who go abroad yeah. for free. There is no recouping of these vast costs of medical training. Again, it's one of the things we've never really thought about, that we are indeed you know, giving them a wonderful meal ticket for life, and especially a good one you know, if they get on a boat or a nice plane to Australia and double their salaries. But, I mean, Adrian, what you're really saying is that medical salaries in Britain will be set by Australia. Is that what you're saying? No. You, no. Well, I think it is what no, you're no, saying. No, no, because hold on, it David, is, David, it is no, what you're no, saying. No, you're ventriloquising what I'm saying. So you're on the right. People on the right say capital is liquid. We have a global market for things. It can go where it wants. Mm -hmm. That's precisely what we're seeing with healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm open to a bunch of proposals about how to deal with this, by the way. I mean, Michelle, I know you've said in the past that people should have to stay for a certain yeah, period of time. So, yeah, I, I think that's quite say, wise. I would say, look, if you're going to get trained, I would wipe out any student debt. But, I agree. But... You have to be tied into the NHS for X amount of years. If you leave, then it's going to cost you to leave because I would take, uh, I don't know, I'd make you pay back X and Y and Z and all the rest of it. I would potentially, um, you know, and I want to make it clear because I know a lot of you get quite cross when I have these <coughs> conversations because you don't think I value uh, the medical staff. I do. I do value uh, the NHS, my sister and mum and nurses, for example. But... I'm also realistic when it comes to finances. Mm. And I think one of the things that gets missed in this conversation often is when we're talking about hourly rates and stuff, these people, for every £10 that they earn, they get £2, a 20% uh, contribution to their pension. Which yeah. are vast. Yeah. Which, I mean, I mean, again, one of the fun, again, the, the, the one of the reasons again that, me, that medics drop out very early is they build up vast pension pots by the, they're in their mid fifties, mm. uh, and because again of the idiotic rules introduced both by Gordon Brown and by his wicked twin on the right, George Osborne, mm. pension pension pots are capped at a ridiculously small amount of money. So it's not worth they 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 incur effectively enormous net marginal taxation and so. So they retire early. In, in other words, we've got a chaos of policies, none of which have ever been reconciled with each other, none of which have ever been thought out, which is, I'm afraid, the plain truth about the whole NHS. It does not work. The very basis of the NHS is wrong. Um, uh, the, uh, what do you uh, mean it's wrong? Do you think there shouldn't be like a universal health care? No, I think that what we need to, t we, we should have models like continental Europe, what the NHS amounts to and why it works so profoundly badly, as anybody who's ever tried to see a GP will tell you, the NHS is not a health service. It is a very large bureaucracy designed to stop you seeing a doctor. That is its essential it? purpose. In private medicine, you see a doctor straight away. In a health service, you never do. Very quick response. Whether or not we have a private or public health care system in this country, if Britain doesn't train enough doctors and nurses, it won't work. And that's where we are. You lead me to a really interesting point I discovered uh, today, everyone. Get this. In 2008, the BMA, uh, I've just been mentioning that union, get this, at their annual conference, they voted uh, to restrict the number of places at medical schools <laughs> to avoid an overproduction of doctors with limited career opportunities. They also agreed on a complete ban on opening new medical schools. So when we start talking about the number of uh, doctors, etc. Restrictive people, anything, practices, my dear. Yeah, I yes. would, uh, if I was in the BMA, I would start looking inwards a little bit, if you ask me. Anyway, what do you make to that conversation? Where do you stand on it? Uh, and 35%, is it realistic? And if you give it to the doctors, where do you stop? Is it just junior doctors that deserve that kind of pay rise or not? Uh, when I come back, I've got a lot to get into with you guys tonight. The RNL.